Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. As always, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Insha'Allah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on an nafs Scholars, rahimahumullah, have given various translations in regard to the term an nafs. But for tonight's heart softener, we will be sticking to the translation known as the ego. So we will be translating an nafs as the ego. And I'm sure, as all of us know, a human being, the son of Adam, is created or consists of three elements. Primarily being the ruh, otherwise translated as the soul, and then the heart, the heart, the spiritual heart, which we talk about a lot. And then the third element is an nafs, otherwise translated as the ego. So what about the body then? The body is just a mere conveyance that is used to travel this short life of dunya. But the main three elements that the son of Adam consists of, that we consist of, is the ruh, and then the heart, and then the nafs, otherwise translated as the ego. So in terms of the nafs, otherwise known as the ego, scholars, rahimahumullah, they mention that the, that the creation of these three elements, there's a slight difference amongst the three. If you take the nafs and the heart, it is created from that which is from the earth, otherwise clay, otherwise known as clay. But as for the ruh, primarily before we delve into the matter, we have to understand that it is all from the world of the unseen. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The people of taqwa, they are those who believe in the world of the unseen. This is all from the world of the unseen and it is upon us to believe in all of that. So now coming back to ruh, in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ قُنِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ They come to you asking about the ruh. قُلْ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Say unto them, that the ruh is from the affairs of my Lord. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And y'all, i.e. mankind, have not been given of it in terms of knowledge except a very, very little. Allahu Akbar. So we really do not have knowledge that encompasses completely about the ruh. But scholars have derived these pieces of knowledge from the Qur'an, from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in terms of the creation of the ruh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in another place in the Noble Qur'an, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ in regard to the creation of Adam alayhi salatu was salam, and when I proportion him, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي And when I breathe into him, i.e. Adam alayhi salatu was salam, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Fall down in sajda unto him, in, in prostration unto him. We already discussed about this sajda. It is not a sajda of worship. It is a sajda to, as a sign of respect, a symbol of honor. But... Now from this we understand that scholars highlight that the ruh of the son of Adam is not from the same realm as 
uh, the nafs and the heart, the qalb, the qalb of an individual. But it is of a bit of a slighter, higher realm, the ruh. And if you also look at it in this way, the ruh keeps traveling. You see, like I said, the body is a conveyance. The minute we discard this body uh, like a uniform, the ruh travels. It is almost as if the ruh does not perish here. It travels on to akhirah where it really belongs. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we always have this inclination towards spirituality. Because the ruh, when we look at a person's body, the ruh belongs to the spiritual realm. The ruh belongs to the spiritual realm. And the nafs and the qalb belong to the physical realm of this world. And that is why the nafs keeps on inclining towards worldly pleasures, towards earthly pleasures. That is why the nafs keeps on pushing a person towards the earthly pleasures because it belongs to the physical realm. Allahu Akbar. But on the other hand, the ruh belongs to the spiritual realm. It keeps on trying to turn an individual towards akhirah because it is a pure being. It wishes to go back to akhirah it wishes to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to devote itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Scholars like Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, they mention, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in terms of the nafs, the nafs is of three types. The nafs is of three types. It is one nafs, but there are three qualities in regard to the nafs. The nafs in general, from the very inception, it is a nafsul ammara. In the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, the lady of the house who tried to seduce Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, later on after she acknowledged, after Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was taken out of prison and she acknowledged the crime that she did, she states, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions her statement in the Noble Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّورِ I do not wish, she states, I do not wish to acquit myself. In other words, I do not want to free myself. Indeed, the nafs is a persistent enjoiner towards evil. Allahu Akbar. Illa ma rahima rabbi. Except for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed his mercy upon. Their souls are free from that. Inna Rabbi Ghafurur Rahim. Indeed, my Lord is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So, at the very inception, a person's nafs is Ammara. Ammara, in the sense, it always inclines towards evil. It always enjoins towards evil. Allahu Akbar. And then, when a person works on that nafs of his, and from this we understand that a person has to work on his nafs. We all have to work on our nufus, on our egos. We have to undergo the process of tazkiyah to nafs. We have to undergo the process of purifying our souls. Because coming back to the three elements, the soul, the heart and the nafs, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there is a constant battle within us. There is a constant battle between the ruh and the nafs within us. And the battlefield is our hearts. Allahu Akbar. The battlefield is our hearts. And our ruh and nafs are in a constant battle. And this is why our scholars, rahimahumullah, they state that the greater jihad is jihadun nafs. Allahu Akbar. Striving with yourself, striving to tame your ego, striving to tame your evil desires is a greater jihad than the actual jihad by itself. Allahu Akbar. Because all of us, we need to work on our nufus. We need to work on our souls, gradually advancing it from Ammara to Lawwama. Now Lawwama is a stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again mentions in the Noble Quran, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بإن نفس لوهما الله سبحانه وتعالى he swears by the day of قيامه and then he swears by the reproaching soul لوهما is known as a reproaching soul and scholars رحمهم الله they have explained that this soul is actually like a stick in the mud. 
it, it, it is waving from one corner to the other. It's still not firm on what it may go towards evil and it may shift towards good. It's in the middle. And then the next stage, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is to make our nufus nafs mutma'inna Allahu Akbar. The minute our, our nafs becomes mutma'inna, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran once again in Surah Al-Fajr, Ya ayyatuha nafsu mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli Allahu Akbar. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. Oh, calm and reassured soul. Allahu Akbar. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Go back, return to your Lord in a state that you are pleased and pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a state that Allah the Almighty is pleased with that soul and that soul is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. And enter amongst my slaves, my righteous slaves. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. Wadkhuli jannati. And enter my garden. Enter jannah. That is the nafs that is a successful nafs, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam because in reality we cannot kill our nufus if we do that we would expire we have to live with our nafs but it is upon us to tame our nafs our nafs is evil it keeps on inclining towards evil we need to work on our nufus we need to go through the process of tazkiyah purification of our nafs resulting in our nafs Advancing from Ammara to Lawama and then from, from Lawama to Mutma'inna, resulting in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being decreed upon that nafs. The other day I was having a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine, a very animated conversation, mashallah. And this, is, this was in regard to a particular TV series. I'm not, I'm not in any way an advocate that you should watch it. But there are a few lessons that can be derived from it. And this is in regard to a martial arts TV series. And in that martial arts, there is a, there is a concept, otherwise known as Satsui Nahado. It is a, a TV series that is from Japan. And this element, this Satsui Nahado, is a dark evil force, otherwise known as the surge of murderous intent. A surge of murderous intent. And we can, it is almost akin to Nafs Ammara. It is akin to Nafs Ammara. So in that TV series, these martial arts, these fighters, they go through a rigorous training where they discipline themselves. They go through meditation. They go through yoga. They go through different various practices to tame that murderous intent, to train that, to, to tame that Satsui Nahado. Because they fear if they do not tame it, it will consume them, resulting in them becoming evil. So evil, almost as if they become like demons. Allahu Akbar. Likewise, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to tame our nafs. Because if we don't tame our nafs, you see, I told you, there is a battle between our ruh and our nafs in our heart. Our heart is the battlefield. If we don't tame our nafs, our nafs will overpower. It will wrestle and pin down our ruh, resulting in us being overcome and consumed by our nafs. And we would turn, our body would turn to that which is evil. Allahu Akbar. We will be consumed by that evil force. Allahu Akbar. We need to fight those evil desires. We needn't go through yoga. We needn't go through meditation. We needn't go through all those rigorous trainings. Allahu Akbar. Our five times salah is enough a programming. The adhkar, morning and evening adhkar, that itself is a great meditation. My beloved Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he is reported to have said, and this has been recorded by his student, Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, that in the morning, in the morning, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, right after Salatul Fajr, he would sit in that very place, involving himself in dhikr, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, almost until 
11 o'clock, around 11 o'clock. And he is reported to have said to his student Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, that if I don't have my breakfast, he used to consider that dhikr as breakfast. If I don't have that breakfast, the levels of Iman, or oh, my strength will start to deplete. My spiritual strength will start to deplete. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So it is upon us to be very sincere in our adhkar, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise in our salawat, all of this has been prescribed for us to attain success in this world as well as the hereafter. So let us not give in to our nafs which is our ego. Let us tame our nafs. Let us tame our nafs to the extent that it is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah the Almighty is pleased with it, resulting in us entering the beautiful gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. May He the Almighty accept our good deeds. And may He help us in the battle with our nufus, with our egos. May He help us tame it. And may He help us to make it undergo the purification process. And may He the Almighty unite all of us in the gardens of Jannah just as how he united us here tonight with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhir da'waya an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakumullahu khayr Donate now go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links